Hey gang, East Coast Lumberjack here, Rod Cumberland. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please uh, plug the subscribe button, give me a couple of thumbs up if you like uh, the kind of material that we're putting out. Anyways, today I want to talk to you about what makes a number one handle at East Coast Lumberjack. So here we're all about quality. And what I do is I actually spend a lot of time securing my wood, uh, buying veneer grade wood, I split it all out by hand, I dry it, uh, hickory dries for over a year in the barn or the garage, Ash, you don't have to wait quite as long, and of course, uh, I split it all out, pie shape, and then I take the outside uh, sapwood off, and that's what I use for my handles. So, this here is typically what I would use. Now, this one here I haven't used yet because it's got a little bit of a wow in it. I'm waiting for a, a crooked handle that needs to be made, but that's what it looks like. It's basically four inches wide, two inches thick, and I call those bolts. So that's, that's a handle bolt. So then, now, even though when you're, and again, I've talked, if you go back through my, my earlier videos, you'll see where I've talked about imperfections. The bark doesn't lie. Bark will tell you what's in the wood underneath. And most times you can get most imperfections and turf them out because you can see it in the bark on the outside. But sometimes I will split wood out. And this happens in ash and hickory both. I'll split wood out. And it'll be nice and straight on the outside. There's no flaws or anything on the inside. But when I start cutting the handle out, and man, it's a pet peeve of mine. I just about go bananas. You start getting in there, like this handle here. I was making this handle the other day, and look at this. Look at that. Not in the middle. I'm, where'd that come from? I couldn't believe it. Um, so anyhow, sometimes that'll happen. Um, in hickory, I've had I've run into nails before. I've gotten some of my hickory from the states, and I don't know where it came. You know, maybe somebody's front lawn. I don't know it was in a in a city somewhere. So I have no idea. But there's something in underneath there, and of course the tree's grown large enough that it's covered over that that uh, piece of wood, and you don't actually see that the imperfection. Now the other thing that happens in hickory a fair bit. I want to show you some of this. So so basically, a number one handle has none of those. Okay, there's there's a less than 25 percent run out. Grain's going nice up and down, okay, with the handle. Um, I don't don't have much run out from from uh, side to side or end to end. So and and when I'm finishing it up, everything comes out good. So I'm saying, okay, that's the number one handle that goes out the door. So <laughs> on this side, this side here is my number one handles, and I usually don't have a lot of, ahead because of course I'm a custom shop, so I make it make it to order. But what I do do, if all of a sudden I'm making a handle and something goes wrong, and, and, and again, I get a little bit ugly because <laughs> I just wasted a bolt of wood. But that's the way it goes. Sometimes sometimes your handle wood's busted. So so here's one here. So so now my, my ice collectors, <laughs> they love this side of my of my workshop because, of course, these are rejects. So I'll sell these. I'll, I'll sell, I don't know, how I, whatever there is there, 20, 30 handles, and I'll sell them for a lump sum. So they get a lot of handles uh, for a lot less money. But there's if they hang on this side, if they hang on the right-hand side of my door, there's usually always something wrong with them. So here's one here. Let's look at this one. Okay, this looks like a beauty. Okay, and I and actually I made an order of racing axe handles last week for a, a group down in Montana, uh, a forestry college down there. But if you look, if you look really close. You can see there's a little bit of a fracture here, okay? And I and I, when I was doing the wood up, I could actually see that little fracture. And it runs down here a little bit. And then, of course, there's actually a larger one right here. Let's see if I can get that so the, the light's not quite as bright on it. So it's it was a hairline fracture, but I noticed it. And I kept looking at that and thought, now, nah, you know what? That's not going out the door. Now, that may, for a wall hanger or something you're not going to run all the time, that'll be fine. So I'll hang it on the number two side because it's still a usable axe handle, but you're just not going to use that in a good axe. Okay, so th that's one example of what went south. Now, here's a beauty. Here's a French curve. And this was a hickory handle. Come out really nice. Actually, it feels awesome in the hands. But when I was doing this one up, I was coming on, and actually you really have to look to see this one. But when I was when I was doing the handle up, I saw a, a real hairline fracture right here. And what it was is probably when I've showed you before when your handle doesn't split nice, um, I'll flip it over and try from the other side, and that's likely what happened in this bolt. Okay, I split from both ends, and that little hairline fracture is right. But 
And right now, you don't even feel it, but as time goes on, you're, it's going to catch. Okay, and it's also a weak point in the wood. So if I can catch that stuff, it does not go out the door. And most times I catch it, very, very often or very seldom will I miss that stuff because I'm, of course, finishing these up and, and looking at them a lot. So that's another imperfection in this in this wood. Um, this one here. Okay, this, so this was a split I thought I could get around up here at the eye. Now again, if I was going to hang that on a little bit on a little bit smaller uh, axe, you you can get around that a little bit of bust here in the handle. Okay, because the rest of it, and this is hickory. Okay, and there's a little bit down here. Now. Let's talk about <laughs> let's talk about this. If you have a handle like this, that actually is not the end of the world because your hand goes here. Okay, see that? So when I'm finishing this off, even though that and I mean it looks bad and it won't go to the number one handle, but that's not a big deal at all. Okay, I can I'll trim up actually when I do my bevel on the bottom end of that and shape that a little bit more. I can get rid of almost all of that, but there'll still be some there. Uh, so of course it's not a number one handle, so it goes on, it goes on the reject side. But this is still a good handle. If I have a little bit smaller axe head, um, and I, if a guy wants a little bit smaller font split, this baby here will fix up beautifully. Now, here's another one. Here's a reject, and, and I would reject this one because, and again, bark. The way I make my wood, I'm always on the outside of the wood. Okay, I'm close to the cambium and the bark. So when you see this on a handle, and I know I sent one to Buck and Billy Ray first, he did was take it off. Don't blame me, Buck and boy. But uh, this bark is not actually bad. It tells you that the guy's on the outside of his wood, which is where you want to be. That's where the straightest wood is. But sometimes, if you uh, if you don't center your handle properly or put it on, you actually take it down there and you'll get quite a bit of this bark. Okay, so there's a lot of bark on this handle. Um, and if I look at it down here on the eye, let's see if I can move this just a little bit so that you guys can see this a little bit better. Okay. So there on the bark, you can see the bark here. There's quite a bit of bark coming down here. All right. So, so that, again, if it's a smaller axe eye, no problem. We can still get away with it. So, another reject. Okay, this one re was rejected because of this knot. Now, this is what we see on the one side. Okay, and sometimes this will happen. You look at your handle and you see, okay, there's a little dark spot. And that's uh, that's mineral stain on hickory wood. It's more prominent on hickory. I don't, I seldom see that on ash much. Um, but that tells me something's going on. And when I flip it around, of course, there's that knot. Now, if that knot, if the knot was down here, not a problem and and i actually might send that out as a number one axe handle because a knot is not going to bother you one bit down here in the palm swell um, but of course the way i do my wood i typically never get those knots if i can see those a little bit i'll put them in a different spot on the handle or i'll try to avoid it all together if i get one of those in, in my block of wood um, what i'll do okay let's just, just for example say i have a knot if you have a knot in your block in your bolt and it's right about here then, then make a 24 or 26 inch handle out of that and stay clear of the knot. There's all kinds of ways to get around imperfections and to get the most out of your handle wood. So that one there, unfortunately I didn't notice that. That was It was hidden until I actually started cutting away at it. So of course, make sure ugly. Oh, another <laughs> handle goes in the reject pile. That's all right. And, and that's why it did. So here's a couple other ones I wanted to show you. And these ones here, Uh, this is another one. This has a this has a little bit of a, a of a split in it. Okay, so it was a throwing axe handle. I saw that split again. It's pretty straight ahead. But this one here. Now this is ash, and it's got a little bit when you when you're coming down through here. See that little bit of discoloration, and this happens a bit uh, a bit more in hickory than it does in ash, and of course. Once you get in there and see that, you're thinking, oh, there's something else wrong with that. Now, when I actually cut my uh, kerf in it and then put the, it actually split. So I didn't know whether I could uh, salvage it or not, but you can see underneath here, there's like 
Must have been uh, lightning or something hit that tree and ruined that. But those are all, anything like that that you get in a handle that makes it a little, any, anything less than perfect really in my mind, then you, you got to hey, put it in the fire, okay? Burn it. <laughs> it's, it's all wood, so it's all got heat value. Throw it in there. So those are, those are some common things that I find in axe handles when I'm making them that take them from a number one and they de de degrades it, okay? It's down into number two or worse. Um, and of course, I only, if it's number one, it goes out the door. If it isn't, then it's going to be used for something else. And that's also why, <laughs> you always wonder my mechanics drive around junky cars. Maybe the same thing, but I mean, I sell all my good stuff to customers. So all this other stuff, if I need a handle, I'll come over here to this side and grab one of these and say, geez, can I make that work? And I'll whittle it out and put it in an axe. So my stuff around here sometimes gets these rejects. So it may not be overly impressive when you're standing out in the back, uh, training deck and you're using my maul to bag a, a log out of the uh, standing block stanchion um, so I think that's it for this for this uh, this week so those are some imperfections and why handles go from being a number one to number two uh, don't mess around with it especially if you're swinging a big axe on it if it's a wall hanger you can get away with a lot okay but if you're going to use it every day don't mess around with any of that other stuff go with quality first and you'll never have any trouble East Coast Lumberjack, if you haven't subscribed yet, please hit the subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and we'll chat with you in a bit. East Coast Lumberjack, signing off.